Hey guys, welcome back to the final assignment of the course. We're gonna do feet. I gave you guys three photographs and the assignment was to start with a simple blocky form, the one I described in the first foot lesson. It was like a footprint that you extrude, and then you attach the simple form of the toes to it, and then a doorstep shape thing on top of that to show the top part of the foot and the arch of the foot. If you don't know the form I'm talking about, you can go back and, and watch that very first foot lesson. I describe it in the beginning. And by the way, for the other two really detailed foot assignment demos, head over to proco.com slash anatomy to get the premium anatomy course. The course has over 350 lessons, including 3D models, ebooks, demonstrations, and critique videos. It's my complete guide to human anatomy. If you're ready to supercharge your anatomy knowledge, Head over to proko.com slash anatomy. So we got this pose, Seka. Really nice gesture of it, a lot of compression in the toes. I really like this. I like the lighting on it, just really great foot pose. I'm not gonna draw the back foot. It's hidden and it's all in shadow. It's really nothing interesting about it. So I'm just gonna do that front foot. All right, so let's begin. I'm gonna draw those simple forms. I'm pretty sure we're looking down at that heel a little bit. Not much, just a little bit, because I know that when I was photographing that foot, I was not putting the camera on the ground. I mean, I think I was slightly above the foot. And so we must be looking down at the heel a tiny bit, just a little bit. So I'm gonna start with an angle up to describe the top plane of the heel. Not up a lot, but just a little bit going to the horizon line and then down to the base of the pinky we're gonna angle it this way a little bit because the whole foot is going this way and the heel is pretty thin and it widens to the width of the toes okay so that's the bottom of the toe where like the that footprint meets the toes and then the toes come out from like around this area oh all of this. Okay, now let's extrude that shape and I'm gonna go towards the bottom of the foot. So give it some depth. Okay, that's about the height of the heel. And I'm feeling like this heel just looks a little bit too wide. I'm going to bring it in a little bit like that. Okay, and then extrude this part. It's not gonna be as tall as the heel. Okay, so there's the footprint extruded, very simple footprint extruded, minus the toes, of course. And now for the toes, let's start with a big toe since it's closest to us. Let's define that top plane. And then from there, the pinky comes out. There you go. Okay, so there's a very, very basic shape of the footprint with the toes. And now we need to get that arch of the foot, right? That door stopper shape and it's from there it's going to come across like this it doesn't go all the way to the toes the slant in here comes up to around there it also doesn't go all the way to the back of the heel maybe like a third of the way in okay so here's the side plane of it I might actually bring this out a little more and there's the slant down and the whole reason I'm doing this is just as a study I'm not doing this because this is like the way I actually begin my foot drawings. There's no way. This is, this is way too mechanical for me to, to begin, way oversimplified to draw a foot. This is for me to understand the forms, the very basic forms I'm looking at. And it's a really good exercise to get good at perspective, getting all these angles to work right. So this is the ball of the big toe popping out beyond this arch of the foot. This is all kind of off the ground. That's the arch, block of the heel, flat plane up from the toes a little bit, and then it starts to come out this way. You'll usually kind of see the indication of a corner like this, then a flat plane. And then from somewhere around here, you'll start seeing the tendons leading to the ankle. And then in here, from the heel, you'll see the Achilles tendon coming out. But all of that, I'm ignoring. The ankle would kind of attach somewhere like this to the foot. But this now helps me understand when I get to my final drawing, I'm gonna be thinking of these big planes, these big forms underneath. But then of course, I'm not gonna make them this robotic. 
The foot is an organic form, but it's not gonna have angles like this, such sharp things. So this is a study. It's not a step-by-step -step process of drawing a foot. It's an exercise. It's just for you to get better at understanding the foot. And also these forms specifically aren't like the answer. These are the forms that I kind of chose to simplify the foot as. There's a lot of artists. You look at Hogarth, Bridgman, Goldfinger, Bombas, they all simplify the foot into slightly different forms and that's fine. It's, it's all individual. For example, the heel. I simplify it to a block. You could simplify the heel to more of a arch shape, which would probably be more accurate. I like blocks personally because they show perspective better than anything that's curved. But you could simplify the heel like this, probably a little bit taller than that. Anyway, cool. Let's start the actual drawing and I'm going to begin with the gesture. I'm actually just going to put this right above so I could see it. Keep it in mind. Okay. I do want to leave a little bit of room above the heel to show the upper leg coming in. So I'll maybe put the heel down here and then the toes right there. Give myself a little bit of room just in case I need to extend the toes. I have room to play with. And as far as gesture goes, I want to think about how it flows through the ankle to the toes. And what I'm seeing is it actually, the gesture doesn't flow smoothly all the way to the toes. It flows real nice through here, right to the base of the toes. And then there's a lot of tension there. So there's a very sudden turn. It flows through here and then all of a sudden, boom. And that shows pressure. That shows weight right there. So kind of this hockey stick shape or whatever L shape. That's the gesture. And I'm gonna draw this lightly so that, you know, these flowing gesture lines don't get in the way of my final lines later because the placement of these might not be correct. You know, it, it's, it's the flow, but I might need to raise it up a little bit, bring it out in a little bit once I get the forms in there and I'm starting to put in the, you know, the tendon and the, the bone coming out. So I don't want these to get in the way. So I'm gonna keep them really light. It's always hard when I'm recording because it's like, I wanna draw them dark for you guys to see then I want to be able to erase. Okay, and then on this side, this flows through here to the ball of the toe, really nice flow, and then tight through here. You can see how the skin just feels tight wrapping around this mass. There's kind of like a S-curve shape through the big toe like that. And I could already see that this width I put is way too much, right? So I have to kind of bring this in more, like right here. Almost always, if I'm looking slightly from like the side of the foot, almost always I'm gonna carry the gesture from the ankle into the balls of the foot. I'm gonna ignore the heel when I'm doing the gesture. The heel is kind of like a little triangular add-on to that flow. And so as I'm designing this, I'm remembering those forms you know, all of this, I'm still considering all that, but now I'm thinking of the motion through here, the tension. It all kind of comes together. And I'm still thinking of gesture, so I'm not gonna start drawing the shape of each toe. I'm kind of thinking of the flow from all the toes in here. This is the crease, average crease, right between the two, between these two forms. And now this crease, or this flow that I put in through here, that's not this line in here for the forms. The side plane might end up being somewhere else. This is just kind of the, the flow I'm seeing from the edge of the foot. The side, the actual corner would be a little bit closer to here where you're seeing this tendon core shadow running across and attaching right here. This is like that crease I'm seeing flowing through the edge, attaching, and then going right into the crease that meets the top of the big toe. Okay, I feel like that looks okay. Just want to make sure I've got enough gesture going through this because as I start adding the form, it always stiffens up a little bit. So I want to make sure I'm getting enough of a dynamic flow through here. Maybe I want to push this out a little bit, even more, just to kind of exaggerate that 
in out zigzag because you know like this zigzag right through here this corner though how much this becomes this is part of that main gesture if I go all the way down to the simplest gesture I can think of. And so the more I stiffen this up to two vertical lines instead of two very opposite lines, the more it's gonna stiffen up. And so I wanna make sure that I'm either exaggerating it a little bit or getting it close to what's up there and not heading towards that vertical, which is our tendency. I don't know why, but we always want to just like make things straighter, whether it's the body, you know, when you got the shoulders and hips kind of doing this thing, we just tend to straighten things out. And I'm getting to the part where I'm starting to go into some details. I've, I've established the big flow. I'm pretty confident with that now. And now I want to start thinking about the smaller forms, maybe some indications of some anatomy. There's also tension in here. You know, this isn't the only area where there's tension. There's a big angle in the joint articulation here but there's also a lot in here you know the foot is pointing forward quite a bit the heel is being brought back and that achilles tendon isn't stretched it's actually compressed through here that's why we're seeing all these creases i'm trying to think of how i'm going to design these creases it's also important to think about the opposite side you know for showing tension here this is compressing, that means the opposite side is stretching. The ankle here is compressing, the ankle here is stretching. So right through here, the tendons, we need to make sure we're showing a nice long flow. And you can kind of see that the tendon through here even kind of pops out a little bit because it's being pushed out by the bone. And then same thing through here. We're showing a lot of stretching on this side. That means there's gonna be compression on this side of the big toe. And sure enough, yes, there it is. There's a bunch of creases going from this area, right where that pinch is. So I wanna make sure I show those. There's creases through here, and so that means there would be stretching on the other side. Now we can't see the other side because it's actually behind. I'm thinking of this top plane here and how right here I'm seeing a little bit of a turn I don't think that's caused by the bone, but it's a nice place to indicate it. You know, I'm thinking about from the tendon, there's a top plane in here for a little bit, and then we start going down diagonally towards the toes, and then it flattens out and then comes back out this way. So right here, you got top plane, right? There's the top plane, and then it starts coming down diagonally. And when I'm putting these structural lines in here, I'm not gonna make them as obvious, as robotic as I did in my first drawing, but I'm putting hints of that in here while kind of combining it with an organic quality. So showing enough structure in there to show that like, this is a three-dimensional form. It's got these angles, it's got plane changes, but not so much that it becomes the oversimplified foot I drew in the beginning, just enough to show structure and keep it organic. I definitely think I'm making this big toe a little more horizontal than it's up there, but I don't mind it. I'm exaggerating that gesture and then we can totally see the cylinder of the toe right through here. This cylinder of the big toe, which then attaches to like the other part of the big toe right through here, the nail. I don't know why I just drew it here. I could have just done it right on the foot. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it as obvious. I'm just gonna think about these forms as I draw slightly more organic forms over here. But this right here, so important, these angles that I choose to put in here. Do you remember that Bridgman drawing that we studied in the premium lesson? How he shows these front planes and these side planes, they're like little boxes. That's a big nail. Make it smaller. You see how nice things look when you combine gesture? Start with that S flow and then you add structure on top of it and so it's Definitely three-dimensional, but it's not boring three-dimensionality. It's three-dimensionality that has flow to it. I'm designing these creases in here. Let's move on to the other toes. Make sure you think about the placement of the beginning of each toe. This part, where it actually attaches to the foot. It's not going to be a straight line across. The pinky and the big toe attach a little bit higher up. 
you can see how this crease here and this crease here, it's higher than the crease right there between these two toes. You know, it's not gonna be all the way up here, all the way down here, and then same thing for this one. Initially, I created this rhythm between these two, but then you kind of have to drop them and think about the actual shape in there. Getting confused. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of which toe you're drawing. <laughs> on her, the longest one is this one, the second one. When I draw toes, I try to look for variety. I don't want to create five sausage shapes. I want to look for an interesting difference between all the toes and sometimes having one of them stand out from the group a little bit more. I'm noticing that with the way the shadows fall on these, these two toes, when I squint, they kind of merge together with the values right through here. So I want to make sure I don't just kind of draw dark lines separating all of them. It's kind of like when you draw teeth. You don't want to draw a dark shadow between every tooth. It's going to look really scary. Same thing with the toes. Find a variety in the way you separate them. So some of them will have really good separations up in here in their skin fold as they attach to the foot. Some will have really strong separations here with the toe shadow really dark. Some will blend right into each other. Some will be kind of in between where it's a half tone separating them. Look for that kind of stuff. Look for variety. So with these two, I'm going to keep them grouped together. I mean, obviously this one has a big shadow right in here that separates them in this area. But right through here, I'm going to just group them together for now. This one has a nice shadow wrapping around it. Another really good area to show perspective. Plane here, and then it turns, and there's a side plane there, right? So if I think about the top and side plane of this toe, I wanna make sure I use cast shadows as much as possible to show form and gesture. Just like I'm using these creases and the toenail. That's kind of why we did this, right? These angles that we determined in this drawing this tells us the perspective of all the stuff in here that I need to follow. So the toenail angle is this angle. The angle here is the angle I need to make sure I put here. The angle here is the angle I put here. This is why we figure this stuff out in a very simple way because the way we design the subtlety in the details of these organic forms needs to reveal the primary forms that we studied in that simple drawing. You don't have to do that initial simple drawing before you start the other one, but it does take a more advanced artist to just be able to think about that stuff while you're doing your final drawing. You have to clearly see it right away as you look at something. If you struggle drawing this, there's no way you're going to be able to show it accurately while you're thinking about details. There's no way. If you can't even do it when you're thinking about just that, how can you do it while you're juggling all this anatomy? So it's really good practice. I highly recommend you guys don't skip that step. Okay, any nails we want to make sure we emphasize. So definitely this one, it can kind of help to show the gesture of this one. And that definitely helps to show how the big toe points up more than the others. You remember that from the lesson? This points down, this points... It doesn't actually point up, it just points a little more up than the other ones. It actually just kind of points forward. And then this one, it's kind of twisted, it's very skinny. I don't think I'm going to use it very much. I mean, I guess I could design it a little bit differently from what I'm seeing. I could just do something like this, but I feel like now it's too similar to this one. Also good to consider the angles of the knuckles we're gonna show. In the shadow, we're gonna show some of this. It's a lot of effort to make these not look like sausages. Okay, let's come back in here and figure out what's going on. The very subtle stuff in here. I'm like not seeing much 
information here for even just for the malleolus. It's just a little bit, you know, because these tendons are popping out so much, it's almost like the malleolus is digging in. And also the soleus seems to be popping out quite a bit. We're seeing kind of a triangular shape right here. And there's bone a little higher. So now I'm actually starting to map shadows. Wow. Shadows. This on there is actually much lower. It's like right there. And then this tendon comes out from here. Wait, is that a tendon? I'm pretty sure this is the tendon of the extensor hallucius longus. And right here, it actually curves in, but the form continues through like a skin fold in here. I know that this doesn't continue to the side of the toe. And I do see a little shadow right through here as well. It's just a lot more subtle because it's being hidden by these creases. But I want to make sure that I'm catching that because I think that this is the form of the tendon. And then of course it softens out. And all the skin takes over. And maybe I want to show that this is now skin right here. All these skin folds I'm putting in here, I'm going to design based on this gesture. All of the stuff in here is so subtle though. Remember right in here, there's like that sausage form of the abductor hallucius and the flexor hallucius. And they, they, they kind of come together in here. So I think that's what we're seeing in here. And I'm pretty sure that this little shadow is just like a fat pad or something. It continues the flow. I like it. All of this in here, it's kind of this fat covering the heel, the bottom of the foot. The fat is being stretched pretty tight in this area, but not here. It's pretty relaxed in the heel. So tight through here, maybe we could show that with a nice straight. And then right around here where it starts to loosen up, we could start to show some fat. Maybe even an overlap to exaggerate that. All right, I feel pretty confident with the anatomical indications I've put in. And the next part is just rendering. It's taking all of the stuff that I've indicated and I've found and figured out and putting shadows on top of it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, good thing I stepped back. I'm seeing that I really tilted this ankle up a little bit. It needs to be more this way. <laughs> I think it caused the heel to look really small and puny. The heel needs to be all the way over here. And then the ankle starts from here and goes this way more. So now this heel looks bigger and I need to bring this out as well. This is why you step back from your drawings. Oh, and this, oh yeah, obviously everything I put within this form needs to move as well. And I still feel like this looks weird. I, I'm forcing it to be more like my simple form, but this peak is much lower. It's like right there. Okay, I guess that heel looks bigger now. I hope. Okay, now let's start shading. I always like to start my shading, just filling in the big forms with a simple mass. So, and this is just gonna fade out. So I'm not too worried about this area, but right here, this is obviously all shadow. 
And then right in here, the foot casts a shadow onto all of the toes. The pinky is fully in shadow. Here's the cast shadow in here. So I'm just gonna start filling it in from here. Just a clean value. And you wanna make this value dark enough. I think one mistake I see people make all the time is when they fill this value in, they don't make it a shadow value. They keep it as like a half tone, maybe even a light half tone. They're just afraid to go dark. Cause it's like, if you if you go too dark, you can't come back. But it's like, yeah, you, you can, but just maybe make sure you have a pure black somewhere on your page as you're doing this. And that'll be a good reference for you. Like for example, I'll put a black note right there. I know that that crease has a pretty heavy shadow in there. And so now that shows me that this value I'm putting in is actually pretty light. I can go darker with it. Probably will in some areas. But so far this value looks pretty close to me. Ideally what you want to do, the value you're shooting for, is your lightest half tone that you're seeing in these areas. For example, this core shadow is a little bit darker than the value I'm seeing right here. And then right here, right beyond this crease, there's another shadow that's darker. Now I'm not filling in that value. I'm, I'm making this value in here that I'm seeing as a reflection. That's the value I'm trying to fill in. And so I'm gonna go even darker than this as I put in some of these darker occlusion shadows throughout the creases. So ideally, I'm not going to have to go back in with my eraser to lighten anything up. I'm only gonna darken from here. It's a difficult balance. You don't wanna go too light that it's not a shadow value, but you don't wanna go too dark that you're gonna have to pull out and reflect lights from it. And then from there, I just fade it out. And there's some small shadows all through here, like for the creases. And I guess I'm not really worried about those yet. Just want to get that big shape filled in. And then I'll start worrying about the details. So cast shadow here. And then this one. Cast shadow right there. And then this toe is casting a shadow onto this toe. And then actually some of these toes have form shadows over here. Right, because this plane on this toe is the same as this plane on the foot, right? It's, it's bottom left, so it's gonna get a shadow. Same thing in through here, bottom left. And then this one casts a shadow onto it. Ah, interesting, so big toe, there's only a shadow on the front plane. This whole plane isn't getting a shadow. I'm not seeing like a core shadow running across through here. I see core shadow flowing down from the nail. And down through here. So pretty clean front plane indication. We're catching a little bit of rim light on this side. I don't know if I want to keep it. Like that's not even really reflected light. That's just rim light coming in from the lights that are, you know, making this background light. There's, there's a light back here shining onto the backdrop, the white cloth. And some of that is coming in and, and hitting the rim of these forms. And we can just get rid of that light source or we can put it in if we want to. I mean, we can always throw in another light source if we want. This is our drawing. We can take out lights if we want. Big shadow is in. Now I can start thinking about the small shadows in here. All these little creases next to the nails. Plane changes. Remember how right behind the nail, there's a plane that comes up. Now these toes are being kind of compressed down and going back up. And so that plane is not as obvious as if the toes were curled this way but we're still getting a little shadow behind the nails because of that drop downward right there. And then very obvious on the big toe here, there's a plane. 
right there. Next step is the darkest halftones. Where am I seeing dark halftones? I'm seeing a lot of them through here next to the core shadow. A lot through here. Pretty much all of the toes are just in half tone. I don't see bright highlights on there except maybe some on the nails. The whole bottom part of this big toe, the blood is giving it pretty dark local value overall. Next to the edges, it gets darker. So remember the core shadow is here. There's dark half tones through here. It gets lightest in the plane that faces the light. And then it starts to get darker again as it starts to wrap under. It doesn't actually enter shadow, but it does get a half tone into that area. And so now I'm gonna start thinking about wrapping that whole cylinder in the light areas. Okay, so let's just start by thinking of a simple cylinder. Gets lightest in here and then darker again in there. And again, I'm not gonna go shadow value here. This is a dark half tone. That's why it's so important to go dark enough in here. If I kept this kind of light, it'd be difficult to put a value in here that's kind of dark that's not getting too close to the shadow value. I'm using the direction of my strokes to kind of keep the flow of the gesture going. Okay, now in here, pretty much the whole thing is kind of dark complexion, so I'm going to just give it a darker local value, flat first. Just a flat, darker value. And then I can start actually darkening the half tones even further. And if I start getting too close to the shadow value, I can darken the shadow in that area. I do see a nice highlight there though, which is kind of cool. Also right there, I do see a little highlight on the corner where this form wraps from top plane to side plane. Okay, now that nail isn't a pure highlight. <laughs> it's got some form to it, like that. And then I'm seeing a nice crisp cast shadow right there. One thing I haven't put in yet is actually the cast shadow onto the ground, which is gonna actually be pretty important because it defines the ground. And without it, it just looks like a floating foot. And it's like, well, why are the toes being pushed up like that? It just gives a little bit more context to the action that's happening here. And here we got the foot, the other foot, but we can just continue a cast shadow. And we don't have to really take it all the way and draw like a, an accurate cast shadow shape here. We can just define it next to the toes and fade off. Let's get rid of this little dude. I think I made this pinky a little bit too horizontal. It's, it's actually kind of up here, but uh, do I mind? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna fix it. It's more of just a silhouette thing. I'm not gonna render out that pinky very much. And so it's a quick fix. And that just gives even more variety actually between the toes because before this pinky was, it felt like it was being compressed against the ground just like the other ones. And now it's hanging down a little bit more. The problem is right now on, on the photo, that pinky is being pushed in a little bit with, by the other foot. And here I'm not drawing the foot, so it, it can look a little strange if I don't handle it right. So really, I probably should have just hidden that pinky a little bit more behind this one, but I kind of like the shape and it doesn't bother me right now, so I'm gonna keep it.
Okay, I'm gonna put in half tones in here, so I wanna just make sure that all these shadow shapes, even the little ones, are dark enough. And once I put in the half tones, all of these still appear like shadows. I know I keep saying that, you guys, but it's really important. Muddy drawings where the, the values just start to look spotty. That's the problem, is not controlling your values correctly. Not organizing them. Hey. Yeah. Hi, buddy. What? I'm drawing right now. I want to see the fishy. You want to see the fishy? What fishy? I want to see the fishy. There. Oh, there you go. Uh, that fishy. <laughs> wow, Cooper, you look like Dory. Uh-oh. I'm a very Dory. Yeah. Uh-oh. I'm a fishy. <laughs> I'm here in the tree. Hey, Mama, my baby. I'm recording a drawing of a foot. See? <gasps> Whoa, look at that, Cooper. <gasps> drawing. Yes, yeah, drawing. drawing. See, there's the foot. And there's the camera that's recording you. And there's <gasps> another one up there. <laughs> Cooper, say bye-bye. They are going into the spaceship now. <laughs> you look so funny, buddy. <laughs> bye, buddy. I'll see you soon, okay? Bye -bye. It'll take us a while to get home. We're in space. Okay. <laughs> All right. So with this toe, you can see how I'm making this whole top plane a half tone. And then this corner is picking up a little bit of light. And then as it comes back down again, and in here it's picking up a little more shadow. Probably more of just because of a cast shadow from this one. But definitely that, just this tone here and here helps to show the roundness of it. And then this one, mostly just half tone. I kind of just knocked it back. I wasn't even thinking about the forms. Same thing through this one. I'm just gonna put some half tone. Bright highlight right there. And I'm starting to feel like these tones, like it, I, that's not really that dark of a half tone, but they're starting to feel too close to the shadow. And I, I think it's just because I need to make the shadows a little bit darker. Through there. Can't forget some of these creases through here. I feel like the toes are pretty much done. Good gesture, good tension through here. Only thing left is just to finish up this area and I'm gonna keep it pretty, pretty general. I mean, there's not that much in here. Some subtle half tones indicating anatomy. So right here, the soleus and the Achilles tendon, all of that coming in. This form is the big soleus, but I'm fading off already in that area, so I don't want to get too descriptive. Just want to make sure it feels like a big muscle coming in through here. Very subtle, soft form in here for the malleolus. And that kind of dives in underneath this form and this form. Sometimes in large, kind of flattish areas of half tone, it's nice to add some strokes in there to make it a little more interesting. 
there's pretty much no shadow in here to contrast these shapes like that, but I could make it a little more interesting with some hatching lines. Which, you know, when you back away from the drawing, that kind of disappears. And that's good. You don't want it to distract from the overall feel of the whole thing. But when you come in, it adds some visual excitement. Heel gets that halftone treatment, just like the big toe in here, and just a darker complexion of red in there. And then there's some key highlights that pop out from that really dark halftone. This turned out to be a much longer drawing than I thought it would be, but that's okay. It's long because I'm focused on quality. I'm just getting everything right. I feel like I need to thicken up that outline on the shadow side. It's pretty heavy on the light side, and so it just feels like it needs to be darker and thicker over here. It doesn't have to be sharp here. It just has to feel heavier. Just going through, cleaning up some boring shapes. Anything I see that just I don't like. Cool. I'm happy with it. Let's move on to the next one. So now the, the last thing we got is critiques for the foot. Of course, the ebook is going to come out, leg physique variations, and then we're done. Well, oh yeah, final drawing. Final drawing of Yoni. That will also be a thing. It's going to be cool. If you enjoyed this lesson, you're going to love the premium anatomy course. To get all 350 of my anatomy lessons, including 3D models, ebooks, demonstrations, and critique videos, head over to proco.com slash anatomy. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the premium course.